Good evening. God is good. All the time. Welcome to worship this evening. I am glad that all of you are here. We are on our last Wednesday worship of the summer. Um, and we will, this worship service will be broadcast on Sunday morning during uh, Labor Day weekend. We won't have worship next Wednesday, but we'll go back to Sunday morning worship. Um, 8.30 will happen here at Our Saviors, and 10.30 will be at Richland. Um, and please note that it, there will also, we're working on having a live broadcast of the 10.30 worship each Sunday morning. So those of you who are worshiping at home with us, please know we want to continue to bring worship to you there. Um, in case um, you are homebound or corona hits or any of those kinds of things, we want to make sure that um, you are also a part of our community. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to work, but 10.30 um, the Sunday after, well, what's the date of that? Is that the 13th? 13th. We will start at 10.30 live worship um, coming to you from Richland. That's the hope anyways. Um, <clears throat> We have school back in session this week. Uh, so far, my boys are doing well. I hope others are too. I hope it's going good. Um, we have, if you've noticed in your bulletin, um, towards the end of the worship service, there is, uh, last week I had talked about um, natural disasters and how can we help. There is a address if you would like to respond with Lutheran Disaster Response. You can also go onto the ELCA website and directly um, give in that way as well. But here's one that's paper if you want to do it that way. The other thing to please note is at the end, PTO will continue to um, help families with the, the necessities that we need in our homes. And so if you would like to give or help in that way um, to give to PTO, you'd be helping those families that need uh, the basics right now during this pandemic. Um, we had a few birthdays this past week. Jason Frankel, Lakin and Kenley Allen, uh, or Kenley Allen, Scott Adams, Matthew Kleingardner, Lori Saylor. Have I missed others? When you see any of them, please give them um, a happy birthday. Lisa, we're not meeting for a week and a half, so Lisa's birthday is on Friday. So um, happy birthday, Lisa, as well. Um, uh, uh, I pray that all of those who I've just mentioned and anyone who I maybe have missed will have a very happy birthday. Other announcements that I may have missed? All right. Tonight, please note, um, Richland leadership team will be meeting immediately after worship here at our Saviors and the Fellowship Hall. With that, we're going to continue with our worship. I invite you to rise as you are able. Um, for the greeting printed in your bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the best and worst of times, we hear the call of faith to join in worship. Despite the circumstances we face, God desires to provide the very best for all of Earth's children. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, enliven the per and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Psalm 119, 33 through 40. Um, please read responsibly. 
Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statues, and I will observe it to the end. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Give me life in your ways. Turn away the disgrace that I dread, for your ordinances are good. The lesson comes from Romans 13, 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, any and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. This, the night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in revealing, reveling and drunkenness, not debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. All right, once again, it is our children's message time. And so those of you who are with us worshiping at home, come to the television set or the computer. Um, the rest of you, you get to be my kids. You get to be my guinea pigs this, this evening. All right, so because it is back to school time, um, kids, young adults, I pray that you have had a good first few days of school. But because it's that time of the year, I'm going to have some quiz questions for you. And you are all on the spot, so don't think you get out of it because you're not in school anymore. First question, are you ready? Okay. How many of each animal did Moses take with him on the ark? <laughs> Nick, zero. Was it Moses? Good job, Nick. <laughs> a little tricky. All right. Are automobiles mentioned in the Bible? Yes, because it says in Acts 2, 1, when the day of Pentecost was come, they were all in one accord. Oh. Wah, wah. That was a bad one, right? Okay. Those two are a little trick. This next one is not a trick question, I promise. All right. According to the Bible, can one, okay, Sophie, listen up here. Can one plus one ever equal three? Mallory, can one plus one equal three? Yes. Okay, so you're right. You're right. Because of our scripture that I'm about to read, the scripture reads, Jesus said, for where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Where two people come together, who is there? Christ. So Christ may not, you might not see Jesus right there, but Jesus is there. Where two gather, two or three gather, one plus one does equal three. Now, I'm not sure how many of us are here tonight, but we can always add one more person because Christ is here. I always say at my dinner table, there's four chairs. The boys know that the empty chair, well, that's Jesus' chair, Mom, because we always talk that Jesus is there, right? Even if we can't see him, 
God is there. And for that, I am eternally grateful, especially during this time. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for being here with us this evening as we gather to worship in your name. In your name we pray. Amen. Would the congregation please rise as able? The Holy Gospel tonight comes to us from Matthew, the 18th chapter. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered, in my name I am there among them. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. A story. Two men who lived in a small village got into a terrible dispute that they could not resolve. So they decided to talk to the town sage. The town sage is kind of like the wise person. The first man went to the sage's home and told his version of what happened. When he finished, the sage said, you're absolutely right. The next night, the second man called on the sage and told his side of the story. The sage responded, you're absolutely right. Afterward, the sage's wife scolded her husband. Those two men, you two, those men told you two different stories and you told them that they were both absolutely right. That's impossible. They can't both be absolutely right. The sage turned to his wife and said, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Some people really like to avoid conflict. I should know because sometimes I am one of those people. But conflict is just simply a fact of life. In fact, many have made the point that conflict, even within the church, is a sign of life. Evidence of the fact that people really care about something. And avoiding confrontation is often a recipe for even greater conflict and pain. The church from the very beginning was not perfect. Neither should we expect our parish or even our community for that matter. We are a part of this community. The dictionary would say a community is a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Community, after all, is one of those feel-good words that draw us into idealisms. It gets our imaginations going. We imagine something out of Cheers, or for those too young to know what Cheers is, maybe the TV show Friends instead. A place where you're accepted for who you are, where you're never lonely, and where, of course, everyone knows your name. Exactly. But the really difficult thing about community is that it's made up of people. And people, not you and me, of course, 
But most people can be difficult, challenging, selfish, and unreliable. We're part of people, right? So what types of communities are you a part of besides this parish? What are some communities that you can think of? I'm going to name a few. Cyber communities. Are any of you, raise your hand once you hear a community, put it down and raise it when you think of another one. Facebook, raise your hand. Pinterest, Snapchat, Instagram, oh, the new, the TikTok, the big controversy one, no, okay. Zoom, anyone been on Zoom calls? Yes. What about work or school or sport-related communities? Anyone part of any of those types of communities? What about kids' play groups or nonprofits or alumni associations? Anybody got some of those? What about running clubs or the gym, any of that kind of thing? Okay. Elder care facilities, coffee clubs. I mean, a lot of you go to coffee clubs, civic groups. Think about all the different communities. And I've just said just a little few of them. The different places, I haven't even talked about family. Family can be a community as well. There are a lot of things that we are a part of. So what kind of community? You know what a community is. What type of community do you want from our congregation? Do we desire a largely social, somewhat superficial community? Or do we want something more meaningful and intimate out of a church? Do we want a place that can both encourage us and hold us accountable? Are we looking for a place we can be honest about our hopes and fears, dreams and anxieties? Do we want a place where perhaps we just blend in? Or are we looking for a place we can really make a difference? For some of you, I'm gonna tell you, you just wanna blend in. For others, you say, I want something more. The amazing place the amazing thing about this place is that this is the place, the holy grounds, where we get to celebrate with people with their greatest accomplishments, joys, additions to their families, as well as the place where we grieve and cling to the cross, walking with people through some of the most worst parts of their lives. My hope and my prayer is that we can become an authentic, real community who's not afraid to be real with one another. Authentic community is hard to come by. It is work. Now, I love all the modern conveniences that the time we live in has. I love how simple life is compared to just a few decades ago. I have to admit, over the pandemic, I have been watching Little House of the Prairie again. And I have noticed, um, oh, I'm grateful for a lot of modern conveniences as they're going to the well and the outhouse and all of those kinds of things, right? But the things that I don't appreciate about the world we live in is how much we need instant gratification. If we have to wait for anything, we are turned off immediately by it. We like things to be simple. We expect simple. If it's not easy, we leave. We move. We church jump. We change schools. We change jobs. We divorce. We find new friends. Does this sound familiar at all? The one thing that modern conveniences have not been able to change or make easier in this world is relationships. Relationships between people. People are lonely these days. And I could have said that before the pandemic. The pandemic has only made it that much worse. People are lonely these days. 
They are reaching out through social media, trying to make connections, and you can connect pretty easily with someone on social media. Whether it's a connection you want to make always or that is meaningful is the question. We can easily connect the things we can't do are keep connections simply because true community, true life-giving relationships are difficult to come by. It takes time and it takes work. But it's worth it. Because when you find it, it's like discovering a little bit of heaven here on this earth. That is, it's like experiencing the reality of God's fellowship and existence in your midst. And as Jesus promises, when you gather in this way with honesty and integrity, even when it's hard, amazing things can happen because Jesus is with you right there in the very midst, forming and being formed by your mutual sharing. Jesus knows that we are human and that people are going to sin against one another. He watched it his entire life, his 30-some years, watching how people would disappoint one another over and over. So he says today in our scripture, if another member of the church sins against you, it's not, um, um, he's saying someone is going to, when it happens, this is what you got to do. If someone does this according to the gospel, talk to them in private. Start there. If that doesn't work, get a couple others with you to talk to that person. And if that doesn't work, bring in the church community. If that doesn't work, treat them like Gentiles and tax collectors. Treat them like outsiders and those who are untrustworthy, Jesus says. So when he's trying to give this recipe for how to keep a community together and how to keep relationships going, what is it that Jesus is desiring? His main objective is to try to keep unity based on God's love, not exclusion based on someone else's sin, bringing Jesus in the middle, remembering why you started that relationship in the first place. After all, how does Jesus treat Gentiles and tax collectors? Does he kick them out of his brood of followers? No. He dines with them. Matthew was a tax collector. He still includes them as part of his gang, right? He doesn't disregard them. He keeps them as part of his ministry. This can be frustrating. Doesn't a community mean a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals, like I said at the beginning from Webster? If they cannot admit they were wrong, how can they still be a part of us? It is easier to just leave. It is easier to walk away and remain mad. But if we are to create an authentic Christian community, we get to stay, we get to mend relationships, take the time to do the hard work and experience a little piece of heaven on this earth. Now, the truth of the matter is, our churches right now aren't in a major conflict, so why in the world, Pastor Jolay, are you talking about this, right? It's easier to talk about it and face it now and have a plan than on the other side when there is a conflict. One thing that Jesus did promise, where there is conflict, when we face it head on in God's name, Jesus will be there. I desire to be anywhere that Jesus is, even if that means in a conflict. I pray you will too, and together, even during a pandemic, when we can't always agree how to be church and what church should look like and if we should wear masks and all the things that go into being church, that we will continue to strive to be an authentic Christian ministry community. Amen. 
At this time, we are going to do another humming hymn, and we're going to sing two verses of, or sing through twice, Bind Us Together. It's not in our hymnals, it's in the blue hymnal. I think you'll recognize the, the hymn, or the tune, when you hear it. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, as Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people. Help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish as we harvest our crops. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough for outcasts in our villages, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing. We especially lift up Gail, Dennis, and Dorothy, Audrey, Sharon, and Jean, Micah, Gretchen, and Mark, Carla, Steve, and Sam, Wayne, Roger, and Alice, Cody, Damon, and Carrie, Barb, and all others we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Bring blessings to those who keep us safe, 
our police, firefighters, first responders, and medical teams. We pray for those serving in the military, especially Morgan and Bailey. We pray for those living in nursing homes and any who are lonely. Lord, in your mercy. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant Richland, our Savior's parish, grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for the mission in your name. Be with teachers, staff, and students as they stay safe and healthy during this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. At this time, I'm going to ask that you get your communion cups out and we will all take together and I will let you know when that time comes. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Now remember, Jesus is here. Jesus is sitting in your hands right now, literally here, ready to be a part of you. You may take. There are empty baskets on every other pew that you can place your empties in. Receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may it strengthen you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Before I excuse you, I want to um, wish you all a very happy Labor Day. I hope you all have um, a very restful weekend. Um, and as you come back the following Sunday, on the 13th, please note that um, there will be Sunday school kits to pick up to do home Sunday school with your families. And there will be coffee here at our Savior's um, between worship services. Services themselves will look very much like they are right now um, until we get further instruction to sing and that kind of thing. So go in peace, serve the Lord.